Hello, hello, hello. So excited to be here back online. It's been forever. No, nope, it's been like a week. <laughs> But hello, everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving, if you celebrate that, or just just a wonderful time with family and friends during this holiday season. <sighs> Mine was very relaxing, very peaceful. Me and the hubby ate, stuffed our faces and chilled out, which is always, I call that a holiday. I call that good times, guys. But today, we're not talking about what we ate, even though I'm always down for that conversation. We are doing another Dear Journal, yay! And it looks like it's that time, so we can jump right in. So if you are tuning in, get some water, get, get some eggnog, whatever you like to drink at this time of the day, hang out with me, put your thoughts and questions in the comments so that I can respond to you, and we'll get it popping, all right? So today's topic for the Dear Journal, every month I come on and do a Dear Journal. This one is really important because I think so many people, self-included, have struggled with the comparison game, right? So I wanted to talk about six ways that I have found as a helpful mechanism to stop playing the comparison game because it's a vicious, vicious, vicious cycle that we put ourselves through mentally, physically, spiritually, and beyond. And we don't have to, especially now during the holidays, right? Where what are we constantly seeing? Our news feeds, our social media, constant of what? Everyone else's friends and families showing pictures, what they wore, what they ate, where they're going, what they're doing, how much money, da, 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 right? Like their whole curated lives that we see put in front of us. And then what do we naturally do? We start that comparison game. Oh, well, I didn't, I didn't get that at my job or, oh, my husband didn't get me this or, oh, th this person didn't do this, right? And we go through this vicious cycle of what did I have or what do I have in my life comparatively to what other people are doing? through this curated presentation because the problem with life is we never know the full story right we only see what we see and that is a curated presentation of a story that we don't have the full context to so it's really <laughs> really vicious when we start to compare ourselves to something that is probably not the full story and probably not even like a quarter of the real story so it's it's really it's like a sickness so how do we do it? First, a couple of things. If you're new to my dear journals, just a quick reminder, I think journaling is one of the best ways to have moments of reflection in your life. Why do you need to reflect? You need to learn. And the only way to learn is to take time to sit with self and to think out and write out or type out what's been going on. How are you feeling? What's what's what, what are you processing currently? And if you don't do that, then you can't really think about the life lessons that are coming to you each and every day. So that's why I think the value of journaling is critical. I really encourage you to do that. That's why I come on here and do that for you and with you. <laughs> so that's one thing. Now, a little bit about me. I journal. I'm a coach. I'm a speaker. I'm a content creator. I'm an entrepreneur. You will have a deck that will be accompanied with the recap video with what you're watching today that will go live on my blog. I'm a blogger on dressingroomthenumber8.com. So go to dressingroomthenumber8.com next, like tomorrow, and you'll be able to see this whole recap post. If you miss any portion of today, that'll be really helpful, but you'll also get access to this deck that I've created with this, to accompanying this wonderful video. So yay, you, awesome. All right, so there's that. Now, if you're like, Tosh, okay, let's do this. Six ways to stop playing the comparison game. Let's run through this. Let's let's get your life together. Number one, <laughs> every single one of us has a root cause that drives why we like to do this vicious game called the comparison game. You need to understand what's your driving force. What exactly is driving you to want to compare your life or an aspect of your life to someone else's? So for instance, is it deficiency? Do you feel like someone else has more than you and you're upset about that? Do you feel like you don't have enough? Do you feel like you have too much and other people have less? Do you, are you jealous? Are you, are you scared? Are you fearful? Are you upset? Are you like what what exactly is the emotion or the mental state that you're in that's driving that comparison game you have to identify that for yourself because if you don't then you'll never be able to conquer that right so we all have our own individual things like so for me until i decided <laughs> that i was done for instance like with body image issues right growing up i started gaining weight at the age of six and have been a bigger body person ever since then right and for me i used to do that horrible comparison game of like 
oh, well, you know, my legs don't do look like this, or I have too much cellulite here, and I have stretch marks here, and right, all this stuff. And it was because I wasn't happy or satisfied with my body. And so the minute that I understood that I was seeing deficiency and inadequacy within myself, and that was driving me to look at what other people's bodies looked like, or what other people, how they presented, right, in this curated, presented world that we live in, and then make that comparison. But what I needed to understand was, I have this body, <laughs> I have one in one body alone. If I can appreciate and love every inch, every scar, every stretch mark, every dent and, and birthmark and beauty mark and mole, then who's gonna love it for me? No one can love you more than you can love yourself because you, that is your job. That is your number one job before anything else that you have to do in this world. You have to love yourself entirely, thoroughly, and every flaw and every nook and cranny, all of it. That's your number one job before you do anything else. So number one in kind of tackling how to stop the comparison game for yourself, understand your root cause for why you're doing this. If you can do that, if you can have that self-awareness, then you can tackle it and figure out what's going on. Is it coming from a place of fear? Is it coming from a place of deficiency? Is it coming from a place of inadequacy? Is it coming from a place of anger, hurt? self-esteem, like what exactly is happening there, all right? And if you have questions or comments, put them here in the comment section. I'm here on Facebook, YouTube, Periscope. I can see them and respond back to you, okay? Number two, another thing that I found very helpful for this is to create a daily regimen of self-empowerment, right? So the minute that your mind, and again, you're gonna go through this on a daily basis. It's a very natural human thing to do. Is it healthy? No, it's not healthy, but human beings, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> we live in the space of unhealthiness. That's what we do. Yay. But we can conquer it. We can fight it every single time it happens. And so <laughs> to stop the comparison game, you have to have a mechanism, right? A coping mechanism of saying, oh, I'm going down the bad path where I need to veer off somewhere else. So where do you veer to? Self-empowerment, right? So for so if you had body issues, right? What could be something that you could do that the minute you started to say or think poorly about your body, compare yourself to someone else's body, what could you do to make you feel good about the body you're in? What could you do? Could you dance? Could you talk to a friend? Do you talk to a coach? What do you, what do, you do, right? So you have to identify, right? What are the things that you can do to help make you feel good about yourself in whatever way that you're struggling with yourself? in that moment. And we all have things that make us feel better. It's not just like, woe is me, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, sure, you can be in that space, but to get out of that space, you have to do radical positive self-empowerment, right? So, but again, it has to be motivated by something for you. What is something that makes you feel good? So for me, if I'm not feeling good about, say, my body, one thing I would love that makes me feel good is I put on makeup or I, I, you know, I pick out a cool outfit for myself or I dance. Dancing makes me feel like I am queen of Sheba. Like, I'm just like, you can't even listen. <laughs> so that's something that moves me, makes me feel good about myself. But again, you have to figure out what makes you feel good. What, what are you struggling with and what would be the solution for you? That's number two. Number three. Now, this applies to if you're doing, and this is critical, guys, for all of you who have small businesses or you're on an entrepreneurial path or whatever, you know, you're in, you're in a business, you're in a career, and maybe you're comparing yourself to someone else, right? Like, oh man, I got, I didn't get promoted, or oh man, I didn't get that bonus, or oh, right? Like, whatever the situation is going on in a business or career, number three is critical level up your skills, right? A lot of times when we're doing this woe is me comparison crap, what are you doing that you feel could enhance you <laughs> to make sure that the next time you are up for a promotion, the next, if you want to elevate and take your business to the next level, what are you doing to level up your skills, right? Because yeah, you can feel sad. Yeah, you could be mad about not having more clients, not selling more products, like Black Friday just happened, right? Maybe you didn't sell as many things as you wanted to sell. Well, what could you do to level up your skills instead of getting down on you and being like, oh my gosh, see all these other people, they're making this and I'm not doing this. 
okay, well, what are you doing to improve your skills? What are you doing to, to be better at marketing? What are you doing to be a better presenter? What are you doing to make your business more marketable to your customer? What are you doing to understand your customer a bit more, right? Like there's so much that you can learn to level up in your business or in your career that the next time an opportunity for success and thriving happens, will be imbued upon you because you've been putting in the work, you've been taking the time to say, hey, I'm here, I wanna do this, there's no excuses, right? The only limitations are what the ones that exist in our mind, right? So cut the crap and stop the, oh, no one's buying for me, no one's doing this. And what are you doing to level up? What are you doing to succeed? If you're not doing anything to succeed, then don't be mad when you don't, right? Like. And I'm, you know, I'm Jamaican, my family's from Jamaica. So like my advice is always like with love, but it's a little rough and tough. <laughs> That's how I roll. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all I know, guys. So I know if that might seem a little harsh, bear with me. It's radical truth. And it, it, I would rather you be like, oh, well, okay. Mm, and take it like that. But think about it, right? I'm, I'm not saying it to be mean. I'm not saying it to be cruel. I'm saying it to be literally real with you. What are you doing? What have you done to level up, right? And what have you done to make sure that if you want more business, if you want that promotion, if you want that bonus, if you want to succeed, well, what are you doing to do that? If you're not doing anything to do that, hello, hello, okay? <laughs> so there's that. Number one, understand the root cause. Number two, create a daily regiment of self-empowerment. Number three, level up your skills. Get your life together, right? That's that Tamar Braxton phrase, get your life. That is 100%, I will say to the day I die, because she's 100% right. Get your life, get your life together, always. <laughs> now, number four, and I love this as a coach because this is critical. We're, when we're tackling like life hacks and like personal self-esteem issues, right? Because this comparison game very much falls within the personal self-esteem, uh, kind of not feeling good enough, the worthiness, lack of lack of uh, the ability to see what you're good at and really focusing on all the negatives, all the deficiencies, all that things, all those crap in our minds. What is your accountability method to, to, to keep you on the straight and narrow of like, nope, I'm not gonna wake up and again, be the victim of my life every freaking day. How many of us know people like that, right? The world is against them. Everything is happening against them, right? Like. I can't even tell you how rough of a morning I've had today, but it doesn't matter. You put your lipstick on, you come on, you smile and you start your freaking day. It doesn't matter. All of us go through hell in a handbasket every single day. You still can show up. You still can do what you need to do and you can still see the, the kind of positive, the more optimistic approach to life. Not just like, oh my God, I feel like puking. Oh my God, I feel like death. Yes, <laughs> but if you're not dead, be alive, be present, be grateful to be here, right? And and what is your accountability method? So for me, I'll tell you my accountability is, you know, the fact that like by nature of what I do to be a coach means I have to get my crap together, right? I can't be out here helping and advise other people and giving them mechanisms if I won't apply it to myself. So the nature of my work helps me keep me accountable, but also as a content creator, I come on and I talk about things and it helps me to keep uh, you know, the moments of reflection that I have to do to be like, oh, you know what, I should talk about this. I should write about this. I should do a video about this. And it, that's kind of like, the. so I hold, like, I think the internet and my clients hold me accountable. So that's my approach. But again, everyone's different. You have to figure out what would be an accountability method for you. Is it your partner, right? Do you have a partner who who's going to be there and be like, mm, get your life. Like my husband, if I go in and I say, go to our room and I'd be like, hey, I feel fat full on attack. <laughs> he will attack me and be like, say something positive about yourself, right? Like he's the kind of person who refuses to let me feel bad about me or to like not make me, not let me be my most excellent self, which he knows all I want is excellence in my life. I, I, I despise anything other than excellence. <laughs> I really do. Like I just really do. And so I have that in my partner. I also have that in special friends who will always be just a wonderful ray of light that I need that will help me see, you know what, Natasha, I'm talking crap and I need to be better. I need to speak wellness over myself. I need to speak wellness into my life. So those are things that I have, but what are things that you have in your life? Do you have people that if you say something negative to them, are they going to be like, well, yeah, you kind of do suck. Or are they going to be like, girl or guy, 
absolutely not. You're amazing. Get your life together. Let's have coffee. I love you. Let's do this, right? You have to have people in your life who do that. And if you don't, if you have people who will feed and fester in that negativity with you, cut them out. They have got to go. <laughs> it is 2020. It is a blessing to be alive. We do not have time for people that will relish in negativity with you. Mm -mm. No, I do not care. Okay. So you can tell them I told them that to go kick rocks. <laughs> and you have no time for that nonsense. That's one form. So accountability through people, accountability through, say, working with a coach, right? Accountability through your partner, right? In your romantic relationships, different ways that you can find accountability methods for yourself, but you've got to identify that for yourself. And you see, my advice and my tips are usually about having you sit and think and get real with yourself because I love reality. I love truth. I'm radically obsessed with truth and self-awareness because the more self-aware we can be, the better people we can be, the better people we can be, the better world we can live in and create and contribute to, right? So radical truth is necessary for self-development, for enhancing your career, for growing as a business owner. Radical truth, guys. All right. Number five. And I spoke to this a little bit right before here now, which is eliminate negative distractions. So for me, that meant, yeah, like cutting out a lot of people, whether they were friends, family, whatever, who who relished in negativity. If I said something negative to them and they didn't counter it and they were just like, well, you know, yeah, I mean, and then they said something negative about themselves. These are not people you need in your life, right? That's one form of negative distractions. Another is what? Media. Guys, we consume so many ads and TV shows, especially right reality TV. Who doesn't love a real good house, real housewife show and all of that stuff. There's a lot of negativity that comes through that, right? Sometimes I can feel myself getting negative after watching one of those programs. Like I just feel like I have the urge to just fight with somebody. Like, mm, like I'm just, I just caught attitude, right? These are negative inducing types of content. So you have to limit and eliminate, especially if it's a trigger for you or if it is fostering more negativity within you, cut the shit out, <laughs> keeping it radically real with you guys. All right. Especially right during this time of holidays. What do we have? We have a surge of people that deal with depression and feel horrible during this time of year because not everyone has family to spend with the holidays. Not everyone has a loved one. Not everyone has positive friends in their life. Not everyone has all the things that they see constantly feeding through social media. And it causes us to do the comparison game, right? What do we do? We identify that deficiency and then we viciously go back on us, on ourselves. And we're like, oh, my life is horrible. I don't have this. I don't have this. And oh, da, 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 right? And oh, wow, you're the victim all over again. How many times can we do this, right? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> critically important that you identify that you were going through this vicious, vicious cycle for yourself and you stop right now. If you've never stopped yourself, this is the perfect opportunity to stop because you do not need to waste another minute, another month, another year of your life doing this to yourself. Cause that's who's, who's doing, is not someone doing this to you? You're doing it to yourself, right? So Let's get radically real with ourselves. Let's get radical truth, self-awareness and say, oh, the minute I start doing that, why am I doing it? What are, what are the things that I can do to veer onto that path of self-empowerment? What can I do to level up my skills or to feel better about myself in a way that helps reduce the amount of times that I'm going to dog myself out? Because that's what you're doing. You're dogging yourself out. What is my accountability method? How am I going to hold myself accountable? Because it's cool if you do this for a week, but then the rest of the month, you're again, talking crap about yourself. What's the point of that? Huh? We got to keep with it, right? We have to create a lifestyle, not just a, you know, like a, like a fake diet of like happiness. No lifestyle change here. Right. And how can we eliminate things that are doing this, that kind of nurturing this negative space in our minds that we're holding. All right. And then number six, I love number six because I'm all about it as a content creator, document and celebrate each and every one of your victories. Why do I say this? Because human beings, we focus more on the negative. Our brain veers towards negativity, right? So if you, if you don't take the time to document and celebrate every single victory. So what am I saying? If I, if you woke up 
in this morning or tomorrow morning. And the first thing out of your mouth was something positive, not negative about yourself or about life. That is a freaking victory, man. Freaking victory. That's amazing. Amazing. Right. That's why I encourage people to start the day with a gratitude list. That's positive. Super positive. So you telling the universe, hey, she ready. He ready for positive blessings. <laughs> right. And document it and write it in a journal. Hello, this is your journal. Or if you want to type it, or if you want to text someone, whatever, just document, celebrate. Hey, I started my day with a gratitude list. Feels amazing. Go you. That's freaking amazing, man. Also, maybe you had a mishap or a misstep at work. Instead of going to the space of like, oh man, I effed up. I did it. Pause, right? What's the lesson that could be learned here? Oh, I could have done this differently. Oh, maybe I, I didn't think about it from this perspective, right? Instead of that vicious dog out self, what's the lesson that needs to be learned here? Appreciate the lesson and move on. And I know it takes time to do that. I know it's not as easy as how that sounds, but it you have to make the commitment to say, I refuse to continue to live a life where I continue to dog myself at, where I continue to hate myself more than I love myself. Why is that your path? Why do you want to do that to yourself? Who wants to do that to themselves, right? And again, why would you ask that, right? That's why you have to ask yourself that. Do I love myself more than I hate myself? Because if you don't, we have a problem. And you have to have the self-radical awareness to say, hey, I've been hating myself more than I've been loving myself. Today, I've got to make a change. I can't live this way anymore. You've got to do it. You owe it to yourself to do it because you are an amazing, beautiful person who deserves more love than you can even imagine, but you have to make that commitment and do the work, all right? Now, again, reminder, you'll be able to have a recap video and my deck that accompanies this video tomorrow will be on the blog, dressyourmate.com. So excited for you to check it out. Lasting words of wisdom before I wrap this up for you guys, because I know it's the weekend, you have things to do, but I hope this is motivating you, giving you a little bit of life, a little bit of energy to feel good about yourself, because that is all that I want for you. Number one, Remember, this game that we call life, you're in this game with yourself. <laughs> There's no point to have a comparison game because you will only be you and you can never be anyone else and vice versa. No one else can be you and they and they don't know what your story is. You don't know what their story is. You don't know their pain. They don't know your pain. You can't compare yourself to anyone else because there's no one else in this world that is you. So if you think about it, right, it's actually completely illogical and pointless <laughs> to compare yourself to anyone else because there is only you right? Even twins. My mom is identical twin. Very different people. <laughs> Very different people. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You're you, right? This game we call life, we got to do this thing by ourselves. We've got to figure this out by ourselves. Now, granted, we have loved ones and people in our life that make this life an amazing life that it is, right? But this self-improvement, this self-development stuff, that's you, boo. That's all you. <laughs> You've got to figure out how to make your life amazing for you, not for anyone else. Because Guess what? No one else is going to live or die based on your happiness. No one else is going to be deeply upset <laughs> as much as they could be for you if you are not happy with your life. You are in this game for yourself. So if you understand that, then play the rule, play the, the game correctly, right? And understand the rules of engagement that we talked about today. Please also understand this game of life is a long game, right? God willing, right? If it is a blessing more now than ever with COVID-19, with this global pandemic that we are in, it has proven to us this year just how <laughs> fragile life really is and how scary it is and how in a minute your life can change, right? If you've never thought about that before, then this year should have shown you that. And I think that you need to understand, okay, if this is the long game, I need to play the long game, but every single day I'm working towards that future, right? This 10 years from now, if you envision being this person five, 10 years from now, well, what are you doing today? Because if you're not doing something today for the future, you're never gonna get to that future. Every single day is, the, uh, is kind of your opportunity to reinvent, to reestablish, to reemphasize, to instill and to empower yourself for the person you want to be in the future, for the person you need to be for your children, for the person you want to be for your grandchildren, for the person you want to be for the schools, for the children, right? Whoever motivates you, who? what are you doing today to make sure that that happens? And a phrase that I love, I love, I love, because regardless of your religious or faith-based background, I say this, I hope you memorize this for yourself, which is the following, do the best and leave the rest with the universe. That's all you can ever do in this world. 
all you can ever do. Do your best, guys. Do your best with trying to feel good about yourself. Do your best in, in your job, in your career, in your business, as a wife, as a partner, as a mother, as a father. Do your best, right? That's all you can do. <laughs> and what's your best? Learning how to be better, right? And, and doing that on a daily basis. Not like, oh, when I have time, I'll read. No. <laughs> like, well, how can you be better today? What are you doing to learn to be better today? <laughs> for you, not just for anyone else, but for you first. And then, okay, how can I be a better parent? How can I be a better a better partner? How can I be better whatever, fill in the blank, right? Do the best and leave the rest with the universe. All right, so just memorize that, apply it, live your truth. With that, uh, thank you for the love on Facebook. I appreciate it. You know, every single time I come on here, I just really wanna give you guys the motivation and the, the tips, simple tips. It's not like, whoa, I never heard of this, right? Like, it's just things that I'm, thinking about that I'm applying, that I'm seeing with my clients, that I see in my own life, that I have to say, wait a minute, we got to talk about this. Wait one minute. We wait one minute, <laughs> right? Like we have to, we got to talk about this because this comparison game stuff is sickening to hear. It's sickening to do. It's sickening to live through. So if you yourself are like, Tosh, oh, yes, <laughs> then I feel you. You're here with me on this journey let's let's cut the crap right radical truth radical self-awareness radical self-empowerment radical life changes transformation only happens through changed action right so if you can take a different approach to things a different mindset different way of living you can change your life today no one has to do that for you other than you life changes through you through your mind through the actions you take today all right so if you have additional questions if you're like what about right and there's like a specific question that you feel like one-on-one -on -one is a better at kind of way to talk i do free strategy sessions with people go to dressing room the number eight.com schedule a session with me i'm all yours 30 minutes you and me hello can we say amazing 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 guys who doesn't want to have tasha time amazing <laughs> All right, so make sure you do that because I'm totally happy to, you know, kind of get a little bit more narrow in there. If, if it's you have a specific issue, whether it's a life thing that you're kind of dealing with the comparison game or a career thing, either way, right? This comparison game is brutal. It's vicious, vicious game that we play. And it, it, it totally can stop today. If you just kind of watch this video again, take the take the time to think about the ways that I'm asking you to think about for the, the, the ways that you can improve your mindset and the actions needed to change today, your life can be totally different. All right. So it's been fun. It's been a pleasure. Thank you again for the love on Facebook. Thank you again for your time. It's the most valuable asset you have and you gave it to me. So I adore you. Hello. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Go to dressroommate.com to be able to see when my next event is. And then of course, if you want to schedule time to talk with me, other than that, have a wonderful, blessed, productive, amazing weekend. Hello guys. Yes, 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 yes. And I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Alrighty. Bye.